Good morning. Welcome to worship. Well, the day has finally come when we get to have our lessons and carol service. It's going to be so much fun, and we want to thank our guest musicians for being with us, and also our resident musicians. So, Zeb, what a wonderful job you've done putting all this together. Thank you so much. I uh, want to welcome everybody here this morning. Some of you get to be here every week. Isn't it wonderful to live in this area? And some of you only get to be here once in a while. Isn't it wonderful when you get to come down to Duck? So we're happy to see everybody. We hope all of you will feel a really warm welcome and the love of the Lord Jesus. We hope that while you're listening to these lessons and carols, you will hear the voice of the Lord speaking to your heart. That's, that's our prayer today. Uh, would you please register your attendance with us on the little blue pads and then pass it down so the people on the end get a chance. Thank you for doing that. A couple of announcements that are really good. Uh, we have reached and exceeded our goal of Zoe Orphans to sponsor. So isn't that uh, wonderful? Praise the Lord. Uh, that feels so good. So if you... Um, uh, indicated that you would sponsor a Zoe Orphan or more than one, if you'll just be sure that you get that done by the end of the year, then the orphans that we promised we would help will be helped by Duck Church. Um, Christmas Eve, this is a week from today, uh, we'll have a 10 o'clock service on Sunday morning, just the 10 o'clock service, and then we'll have a service on Sunday evening at 4.30 and another one um, it's going to be so glorious, and I hope that you'll bring family and friends with you. It's uh, maybe the highlight of the whole year for Duck Church. What do you think? Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. Now, uh, we come to the time of the lighting of the Advent wreath, and the Circle of Friends is going to do that. So, Circle of Friends, I invite you to come up. Uh, congregation, I invite you to look in the bulletin. See if you can find a way past these gorgeous poinsettias, put in honor and memory of people we love. The Sundays of Advent are a time of preparation for the coming of Christ and the celebration of his birth. On the third Sunday in Advent, we light the candle of joy for the coming of Christ into our lives brings joy. We light this candle as a symbol of joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O, o come, come, O, o come, come, Emmanuel. Thank you, Circle of Friends. Let us pray. Let us prepare our hearts to hear God's word. Once more, let us hear of his plan to redeem us from darkness by sending the light of his Son. Through the reading of the word, may we, like the shepherds, hear the angels. In our hearts, may we also journey to Bethlehem and see the Christ child in a manger. But first, we pray for this church and for those who are called to serve. We ask for hearts of goodwill in our families and among our neighbors, in our communities, and in our nation, that we might truly have peace on earth. Amen.
the book of Genesis. Just before twilight, as the evening breeze began to blow, Adam and Eve heard God walking in the garden. Knowing that they were naked, they were afraid and hid from him among the trees. But God called out to Adam, Where are you? And Adam answered, When I heard you, I hid, because I was naked. Then God asked him, Who told you that you were naked? Have you disobeyed me by eating the forbidden tree? Adam replied, The woman you gave me is a companion. She offered me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. Then God asked Eve, What have you done? And Eve replied, The snake tricked me into eating the fruit. God turned to the snake and said, Because you have done this, I will curse you, and you will be despised above all living things. For the rest of your days, you will crawl on your stomach and eat the dust of the earth. You and your offspring will be lifelong enemies of the woman and her children. You will bite them on the heel, and they will strike you on the head. And to Adam, God said, Because you have disobeyed me, I will curse the dust for which you were made. Only by the sweat of your labor will the ground produce enough food for you to eat. For the rest of your life, you will struggle to make a living out of the dust. And when you die, to the same dust you will return. Thanks be to God.
The second lesson, God's covenant with Abraham from the book of Genesis. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham, because you have obeyed God and were willing to sacrifice your only son, the Lord makes this solemn promise. Your descendants will outnumber the stars in the heavens and the grains of sand upon the shores. And through you and your children, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Thanks be to God. third lesson, the birth of Christ foretold from the book of Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light, a light that will shine on everyone, even those who live in the shadow of death. A child will be born to us, a son given, who will be our leader. We will call him Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. His kingdom and the peace it brings will last forever and he will rule 
with justice and goodness. Thanks be to God. The fourth lesson, the peace of Christ foretold from the book of Isaiah. From the ancient roots of David's family tree, a shoot will spring up, a new branch that will bear fruit. The branch will blossom with wisdom, power, and understanding that come from obedience to God. He will not be influenced by outward appearance or unreliable testimony, but will exercise fairness over the poor and needy bring justice to those who break his law. There will come a day when the wolf and the lamb will live together peacefully, a time when the leopard will sleep next to the goat and the lion beside the deer, and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will eat side by side, and their young will lie down together. The lion will no longer be a predator, but will eat straw like the ox. Children will play near the snake's den and not be in danger. No creature will be harmed or be harmed, for creation will overflow with the ways of God. Thanks be to God.
the fifth lesson, the angel Gabriel's appearance to Mary from the Gospel according to Luke. God sent the angel Gabriel to the town of Nazareth with a message for a young girl. The girl's name was Mary, and she was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The angel greeted her with these words, You've been highly regarded by God, and he is with you. As Mary thought about the meaning of this, the angel continued, Do not be afraid, Mary. God has chosen you to become a mother. You will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will rise to power be called the son of the highest. God will give him David's throne, and he will rule his people forever. Mary asked the angel, How can I have a child, since I am a virgin? And the angel said, This will happen by the power of the Lord. His spirit will be upon you, for this child will be the son of God himself. At this Mary said, I'm willing to serve God as he sees fit. Let it be as you have said. Then the angel Gabriel left. Thanks be to God.
If the ushers will come forward, we'll receive the morning tithes and offerings.
the sixth lesson, the birth of Jesus, from the Gospel according to Luke. Soon after this event, the Emperor Augustus ordered the census to be taken of his empire. Everyone had to travel to the city of his ancestors to be counted. Since Joseph was a descendant of David, he had to be counted in David's hometown, which was Bethlehem. So he and Mary traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The city was overflowing with visitors and lodging was scarce. While they were there, Mary gave birth to her first child, a son. And because the only room available to them was a stable, his cradle was a manger, a feeding crib for the animals. Thanks be to God. Seventh lesson, the shepherd's journey to the manger, from the gospel according to Luke. That night in the hills surrounding Bethlehem, shepherds tended their sheep. An angel of the Lord came to them, and a bright light surrounded them. They were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I am not here to harm you, but to bring you good news, news of joy for the entire world. A child has been born in Bethlehem tonight, a child who will be a savior to you, who is the Messiah. This is how you will know him. You will find him wrapped in cloth, sleeping in a manger. Suddenly many more angels appeared, and they praised God, singing, Glory to God in the highest part of heaven. Peace on earth who will, to all who will find favor with him. When the angels left, the shepherds said to each other, let us go to Bethlehem and see this child. And they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger, just as the angel had said. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
lesson. The scholar's pilgrimage to the child from the Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus was born, a group of scholars traveled from the east to Jerusalem. Where can we find the one who has been born king of the Jews? They asked. A star in the eastern sky announced his birth, and we have followed it so that we might worship him. When Herod, who was king, heard this, he was alarmed. He brought the chief priests and religious teachers together and asked them, where do the scriptures see, say that the Messiah will be born? The answer to the prophet Micah foretold that this would take place in Bethlehem. When he heard this, Herod asked the Eastern scholars where they first saw the star. Then he sent them to Jerusalem saying, when you have found this new king, let me know so that I may also go and worship him. So the scholars continued their pilgrimage following the star. When it stopped over the place where the child was, they were overjoyed. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, and they kneeled before him, offering him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But having been warned in a dream not to report back to Herod, they returned home by a different way. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
ninth lesson, the mystery of the incarnation, from the Gospel according to John. In the very beginning, the one called the Word existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. In the beginning, the Word and God were one. Through him, everything came into being. Nothing came into being without him. In him was life, and he gave life to everything he made. His life was like a light shining in the darkness of human existence. But the darkness was so heavy that people were unable to see the light, even though it continued to shine despite the darkness. So God sent a man named John to tell people about the light, that they might know it and believe in it. John was not the light himself. He was sent to announce the light. The one perfect light that gives its light to everyone was coming into the world. When he came to the world, a world he himself had made, it did not recognize him. He came to his own people, the ones he had made, and were not welcomed by them. But those who did welcome him into their lives became children of God like him. Even though they were not God's flesh and blood children, he welcomed them into his family. But Christ, who was the Word, became flesh and blood and lived among us. We saw his light, the light of the Father, shining through the Son, showing us his grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
you stand for the prayer? Almighty God, as we have heard the reading of your word, we remember and give thanks. Remembering that you sent light into our world, we give thanks that we never need to live in darkness. Remembering that you sent your Son as one of us, we give thanks that through him we have become your children. Remembering your great love and mercy, with the angels, we too give thanks and praise. Amen. And now may the light of the word shine upon your path and guide you. May the light watch over you and be a companion to you by night. May the light burn in your hearts and shine in your lives through the day and through your living. May you be a witness to the light of the world. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Merry Christmas.